What's going on guys and welcome to episode number 19 of career mode and it is of course the Capital One Cup final against Manchester City uh, here at Wembley and uh, I just want to do a quick introduction for those of you that may be new to this channel. Uh, welcome, uh, I upload career mode every day and occasionally on my team videos so welcome and if you'd like to subscribe please do so. And uh, another introduction as well to my newer subscribers, uh, for those of you that... Um, maybe new, this may be the first career mode series you've seen on this channel, uh, if that's the case and you're kind of just finding about, uh, out about finding out more about me, that's what I'd say, uh, straight away, then uh, we do live commentaries, every every final we get to in career mode we do live commentaries, uh, the reason being is simple, it keeps the series fresh, that's not that great, uh, that's, let's put Brady Johnson on the bench, uh, Snodgrass is okay, I I'm tempted to put one of the Murphy brothers on the bench, Maybe Josh Murphy's got some decent stats. Just a, I don't know. So I like Snodgrass. Nah, he's fine. He's he's fine. Um, yeah. Sorry, I was going off track there. Um, yeah, we do live commentaries uh, for every final we get to. Um, the reason being is quite simple. It just keeps the series fresh. Otherwise, it's the same format every single uh, every single episode, and that must get boring after a while. So um, that's why we do live commentaries every. Uh, every final we get to and um, yeah hopefully you'll enjoy this, it is of course the Capital One Cup final against uh, City and um, to be honest the reason I really want to win this is because it will set up Europa League football next year so um, there you go but uh, for the live commentaries we tend to get questions in uh, we tend to get questions in, we have done for this one as well um, you can ask me questions on my Ask FM. Uh, I have an Ask FM pro uh, profile uh, the link to which is in the description and I also have a Twitter and my Twitter link is in the description as well. Uh, all my social media stuff's in the description. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, blah, 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 blah. Um, but if you're allergic to clicking on links, then my Twitter is at Doclanders. And uh, yeah, I've got loads of questions. So thank you very much to all that submitted me questions. And uh, we'll get straight into it. We'll get straight into the questions and uh, try and answer as, uh, as many as possible. Because I, I did get quite a few. But um, anyway, <coughs> yeah, the first question for this live commentary. Uh, comes from Christian, and uh, Christian says, "Thoughts on Southampton, please." Um, thoughts on Southampton. My thoughts on Southampton are that I, I just, I love their English kind of setup. Uh, I think I read somewhere they had the highest per uh, percentage of English players uh, per team in the Premier League. So I love their kind of English theme side, um, and I also love their academy. I think their academy is up there as one of the best in the country. It's, I mean, it's got to be, hasn't it? It's produced some incredible players over the past few years. Obviously, Bale, uh, now the world's most expensive footballer. Um, thinking about other players, Walcott, Oxlade Chamberlain, players that are playing for Southampton right now, Shaw, Ward Prowse. Uh, there's loads of players that I'm not going to mention because we'll be here all night. But um, yeah, the academy at Southampton is incredible. And uh, obviously, they've got a lovely English theme side, which is great to see, really. And uh, of course, they've got uh, Paolo Gazaniga in their side. But. Uh, I'm, I'm, I haven't really mentioned Gaza this year. I, I kind of like just want to let the joke die. It, it's been one year of Paolo Gaza and Iga jokes. Let's just leave it there. Um, but yeah, Southampton are a good side. Um, they, they'll be fine again this year. Um, I think Pochettino is a really good manager. I think that the change to take out Atkins was, at the time, uh, a bit of a debatable decision. Well, it was debatable, obviously. Um, it was a bit of a harsh decision to... Uh, to uh, sack Nigel Adkins uh, in the first season in the Prem and then replace him with Pochettino. I think everyone was like, that's just stupid. But in general, it's turned out to be a quite a good decision because, uh, you know, I think that Pochettino's a lot more tactically aware than Adkins ever was. And, uh, oh, what a chance. What a chance. Oh, great tackle by Song. Oh, what a chance still. Oh, oh Butland. Whoa, Butland. Risky, risky boy. Um, so yeah, the, the decision to get rid of Atkins was a bit dodgy at the time, but um, I think it's done quite well. I think Pochettino's doing a good job, and uh, there is my thoughts on Southampton. Um, <clears throat> now that is not where I wanted the pass to go. Uh, the next question comes from uh, Red Bombers 1900, and he says, "How much do you think high grades are actually worth in life? How much do I think high grades are worth in life? Um, not a lot." Not a lot, not nowadays. Back in the day, maybe they were worth quite a bit, but nowadays they're not worth a lot, are they? Um, it's all about degrees and experience. I, I think grades are basically nothing nowadays. So long as you have the fundamentals, that's all you need. So long as you have a passing grade in English, maths, that's all you really need. Um, that, yeah, that, that's all you really need to uh, be up there as 
as equally qualified in terms of high school grades as anyone else. Um, I don't think you need to... The thing is, it's it's all about a degree nowadays. If you don't have a degree and you just have high school education... Oh, what a mistake. If you if you just have high school education, it doesn't matter what your high school grades are. It, you could have, like... You could put two people there that never got a degree and one person has um, A's all round, A's in all their GCSEs and one person has C's in all their GCSEs. To be honest, those two, those three people are basically going to be seeing the exact same. You know, I mean, that's how I see it anyway. Like, I honestly believe that grades nowadays are a pretty, pretty much nothing. You know, don't get me wrong; they're they're important in terms of getting yourself to a university. But as for actual employment, they're quite minimal in terms of importance. You know, at least, at least that's what I think. Um, so I don't think they're that important, really. Not nowadays. Back in the day, yes. Nowadays, not really. Uh, next question comes from uh, Wee Peeler, who is of course a YouTuber, and he says, "What got you interested in YouTube?" Um, I think just what got me interested in YouTube. I think just the idea of how uh, how big of a, an effect one video can have on a person. I think that's what got me most in interested in YouTube. Um, I've talked about this before. Sorry, I'm not feeling very well, guys. Today I've got a bit of a, uh, a sore throat and a runny nose, so apologies if I uh, don't sound with it. But um, one of the things that got me most in interested in YouTube was the idea of, of how powerful one video can be and how much it can mean to one person. And what I mean by that is, uh, I've talked about it briefly before on my channel, but um, when I was in school, I used to watch YouTube videos. And I still do, obviously, but not as much as I used to now. But when I, whenever I used to come home from school, I'd watch YouTube videos. I'd like make myself a sandwich and just turn on my laptop and, and watch some YouTube videos just to cheer myself up because I never really like school wasn't a bad experience for me but I never had like an amazing school experience and when I came home if I was ever a little bit miserable maybe the day didn't go very well um, I would watch YouTube videos and like there was two YouTubers that always used to cheer me up the Rad Brad who obviously everyone knows about and Dunkers who doesn't upload anymore um, those two I used to watch them all the time and they really used to cheer me up great block that is they used to cheer me up so much and I remember just thinking you know like as a kid I'm just one kid and these videos are like really entertaining and really cheering me up and I just remember thinking to myself one day I want to give the the same level of commitment they do back to people if that makes sense like I just thought to myself I, I really like one day when I'm older I want to be on YouTube and I want to entertain people and, and make them feel better when they're not having good days just like these two are if that makes sense that's that's what really got me interested in YouTube. Just the idea that my videos can cheer people up when they're on a bad day. And that's what I try to do. That's that's what I try and do every day, you know. I upload daily in the hope that people will come home from school. Because I know that most of my audience are kids coming from school. And if they've had a bad day, maybe they'll get cheered up a little bit by seeing my videos. And, and even if it's like for five minutes a day, just seeing my videos just gives them a little bit of a smile. That's that's all I want, you know. That That's all. I, that's, that's the reason I do it. Uh, that's the main reason I do it, I should say. And... Um, that's what got me interested in YouTube to begin with, and uh, yeah, that's about it. Um, let me get a break and play, because I really don't want to concede whilst I'm looking at the screen, because the screen is faced a different angle to the TV screen, and City is so good on this game. They've beaten us twice in the league. Oh, it's, oh, it's, off, the, oh, it's off the bar. I thought I'd gone in. I thought it creeped in there. I could just pause, this, pause the game, couldn't I? But uh, nah. Uh, next question comes from Theo, and he says, "Do you think Arsenal can win the Premier League?" Um, uh, uh, no, <laughs> no, I don't. Um, no, I don't. Sorry. Um, the thing is, uh, I feel I feel pleased for Arsene Wenger and Arsenal fans because uh, at, at the start of this season. When everyone was saying stuff like, oh, Arsenal aren't going to qualify for the Champions League and uh, Wenger is going to be in his last season and stuff like that. I, I remember saying, I, I did a, when, when I was doing a career mode live commentary like this one, I, I was asked my opinion on, on Arsenal and that. And I said, Arsenal are going to be fine. I said, they're going to qualify for the Champions League next year and they're going to be fine. They're going to qualify from their Champions League group, despite it being Dortmund, Napoli and um, Marseille. They'll still qualify from the group. And they'll qualify for the Champions League for the season after this one coming up. So, I said they'd be fine. And at the moment, they are doing fine. They're doing better than fine. They're top of the table. So, they are top of the table, I think, aren't they? Yeah, I'm pretty sure they are. So, they're doing fine, you know. And um, 
I remember just like reading all the comments about how Wenger needs to go. Like he's been at the club for too long. Now he's not good enough, and Wenger must go. And all the fans hate him, and everyone and Arsenal have turned into a laughing stock. And I'm so glad that's not the case because Wenger deserves so much more credit than he gets. And um, as for actually winning the Premier League, I, I don't see it happening. Like, don't get me wrong, the introduction of Ozil has been incredible. And yes, I pronounce Ozil, Ozil, so deal with it. Um, the introduction of Ozil has been incredible. What an amazing signing that has been. God knows why fucking Moyes didn't try and hijack the deal. But um, there you go. Um, the introduction of the German playmaker has been incredible. And to be honest, like, they've got off to such a good... After having such a bad start, that home defeat to Aston Villa... They've turned it around so well, but I, I still don't see them as having the Champions League quality. When they're playing players like, and I know it's going to sound stupid because he scored on the weekend, but when they're playing players like Nabry, it's like, no matter how good of a talent he may be, he doesn't have the class. You know, he doesn't have the the class as a... Uh, how, how do I explain this? In depth, Arsenal don't have as, as, as good a side as, as someone like City, you know? These balls are going into the box. I want them to go to the other side of the pitch. Basically, what I'm trying to say is that although they've got some incredible youth talent, which they do, um, oh, Turner, 1-0. 1-0, Michael Turner. Thank God for that. <clears throat> they don't have the strength in depth that other clubs do, and that's what's going to cost them. You know, come the end of the season, uh, when there's like three, when there's like two, three months to go, when they start to have little uh, fitness problems, when they start to have injury problems, it's going gonna, it's gonna to really affect them. You know, they don't have the strength in depth. Uh, that other clubs like City and Chelsea do. So I think that's their biggest downfall, and I don't think they can win the Premier League. Um, again, I should say it's my opinion, so don't take it you know 100% seriously, but it's I just don't think they've got the strength and depth to challenge for the Premier League yet. Um, next question comes from uh, Jake White, and he says, thoughts on NUFC and Sunderland? I don't know why people want me to talk about their clubs, but um, thoughts on NUFC and Sunderland? What a boring final this has been, by the way. <laughs> Thoughts on NUC and Sunderland? Um, I don't really have any. Um, they're two clubs. <laughs> That's about it, you know. Um, I, I don't know what you want me to say, to be honest. They're just two clubs. Um, I don't have an affiliation with either, and that's that. Um, that's about it, really. I don't have any affiliation with either, and that's that. So, yeah, sorry, I can't really answer your question because I don't know what, what you're expecting, really. I mean, what thoughts am I supposed to have? I don't know. I can't ask you a question. I'm sorry. And, uh, I'm, oh God, I, I just, I'm sniffling so much. I was fine before I turned on the microphone, and now I'm sniffing so badly. Uh, next question comes from Sean Taylor, and it says, uh, Is it weird knowing people are on the other side of the world looking forward to your content? Myself included, keep going. And I really should have read that question when a ball went out of play. Um, is it weird that people are across the world looking forward to my content? No, not really. Um, not really. See, a lot of people ask me questions like this, and they say stuff like, is it weird knowing that so many people, like, think of you as uh, an awesome person? It's like, no, not really. It's like, it's it's to be expected. Like, without meaning to sound boastful, it's to be expected. It's like, whilst I'm on YouTube, like, I expect my demographics to be like that. Um, because the internet is worldwide, obviously. Um, so it's not really weird. It's like, it's, sometimes it's, it's weird when I think about how people have, like... Uh, really interesting lives going for them and they still think about my videos sometimes I find that weird like without meaning to sound like really offensive to some people but sometimes I think that most of my audience are probably people that don't have the best of lives and they just like look for entertainment elsewhere which is fine like like I say I used to do the same thing and oh god what a finish that is um, which is fine but it's interesting when I like I hear some people talk about like they, they, they mention like they were you know, they're out on holiday with their girlfriend or whatever, and they, they wanted to check up on my videos and stuff, and I think that's kind of cool. But um, in general, the whole, like, is it weird knowing that people in, like, Asia are interested in my videos? Not really. It's it's just one of those things, you know? That was such a soft goal to concede. My passing is all that. I'll tell you, one of the worst things about uh, this year's FIFA that hasn't been talked about much is how bad the passing is. It's unreal. It's genuinely so bad. It doesn't matter what passes you've got at the ball. You can have players like Xavi or Iniesta... And then you can have centre midfielders like I've got, like Johnson and Housen, and their passing is exactly the same. It's terrible. Passing this year is terrible, no matter what the stats are. Uh, next question comes from. That's uh... no, the same guy. I don't want to answer the same question for the same guy. It's from uh... Sylwek. Is that how you pronounce that? S Y L W E K. Um, and he says, when I have a break and play. 
He says, uh, who is the best and worst BPL manager so far for the season? <clears throat> um, well, the best, in my opinion, has been Brendan Rodgers. Uh, I think he's done really well. Uh, some of the signings he's made have been fantastic. Um, also, keeping hold of Suarez is a fucking unbelievable piece of business, <laughs> considering uh, Lille Plant even in the Europa League. Um, so I think uh, I think Rodgers has been the best manager so far this season, but also uh, an honourable mention to Martinez. Because um, what he's done in his first season for Everton so far, he's got to a great start. Uh, but I'd I'd go with uh, Brendan Rodgers just because of how impressive Liverpool look. You know, they they look so impressive, and it's great to watch them like this. It really is. Um, and the worst manager. I think everyone wants me to say David Moyes. If you're listening to this, I'm sure you'll want me to say David Moyes um, because it's funny to laugh at Manchester United. Um, I don't know. I, I, I mean, I, I would, I kind of like, I feel inclined to say David Moyes because obviously it has been a really bad start for him. Um, I feel inclined to say David Moyes. If we're just going based on the Barclays Premier League, then I guess it would have to be Moyes. Um, I, I don't. The thing is, with, with Moyes, it's really difficult to to talk about because. Ah, no, actually, I don't want to say that because that'd be offensive. Oh, what a goal, Leroy Fur! This is why I love this guy. He is so awesome. What a finish that was. I know finesse shots are OP, but even so. Um, I think everyone wants me to say Moyes. Well, I'll go with David Moyes, but an honourable mention must go to Martin Yol. I think Martin Yol deserves... I was going to say <laughs> deserves a lot of criticism. In a way, he kind of does. Um, Martin yol has got off to a terrible start for them. I mean, he was under pressure at the back end of last season, wasn't he? And, and now a lot of people are saying that <clears throat> he needs to get replaced. Um, and I, I kind of... I kind of see that. I think that they're currently sitting in 18th, and you know, I think Martin Yole and David Moyes are a tie for the worst manager of the BPL this year. I think mainly because a lot of people were expecting Yole to make some good signings. They got a new chairman. They had a little bit of money to spend, and you know they brought Stecklenberg. But you got to feel sorry for Yole there because he got an early injury, and that's a real shame. But um, they haven't really made too many impressive signings, and of course they lost on a weekend to Cardiff. Um, with Moyes, of course, it's just been an awful start for United. Uh, I don't know, Moyes or Yo. I, I guess I'd right now I'd have to go on my gut and that would say Moyes, but you can't discount that Yo's doing a bad job for Fulham as well. So there you go. But it's just everyone wants you to say David Moyes. You know, everyone wants to criticise Moyes already. It's like give him a chance. I mean, it's been six games. I know it's been a bad start, but just give him a chance, please. You know. Well, that's a good save. Uh, next question comes from uh, Harry Maddock. <clears throat> And he says, championship predictions, uh, especially the non-QPR Reading strong teams, e.g. Brighton, Forest, Leicester, ETC. I'm not sure what that question is. I think he's just asking me who I think is going to get promoted. Um, I don't know. I don't know. The championship is one of those leagues which is so awesome because, oh, what a goal that would have been. Which is so awesome because it's just so unpredictable. Every year you never know who's going to do what. I mean, I am so fucking shocked about how bad Dougie... <laughs> Apologies for the language there. I am so shocked at how Dougie Freeman's doing at Bolton. Unbelievable, it really is. I mean, I can't remember what the result was against Yeovil on the weekend. I think they drew, but unbelievably bad start. I mean, Dougie Freeman should not be a careers advisor, I'll tell you that much. With with Palace, it was like how well he was doing. He leaves Palace to go to Bolton. Palace get promoted and Bolton <laughs> are doing terrible this season. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean... I don't know. The championship is one of those leagues where I never want to give predictions because I will just end up being so wrong because it is just so damn unpredictable. It's crazy. So I really don't want to answer that question because I know that everyone will be like, oh my God, you know nothing and stuff. But it's just so hard to predict. Um, but I'm so glad that Steve Lomas is sorting out. That's all I'll say. I mean, I, we got off to such a bad start and I was really, really fearful for Lomas because obviously our fans are such a demanding bunch. I was really fearful that the chairman was going to have a knee-jerk reaction and just you know, send him on his way. But um, I'm really pleased that he seems to have turned it around over the past few games. So, um, yeah, there you go. There's still a lot of work to do, obviously. Oh, I'll just say, Butland, I hate it when teams play high press on this. Um, uh, Dan John Moore uh, says, one thing you'd change about how you grew up. 
One thing I would change. That depends. Like, what? What am I allowed? Am I only allowed to do realistic changes? Or can I change anything? Because if I can change anything, uh, that would be private. But if, um, uh, that's a really difficult question. This guy, this guy that's asking me this question, he knows me so well. It's it's crazy. A few of my subscribers know me really well, and this guy knows me really spot on. Um, it's it's that's a really difficult question because I I don't want to answer it because first of all it's kind of private, but if it's something I can change like completely then it would be private but if it's something realistically I would just say I wish I grew up in a family that was a lot more accepting that's all I'd say um, because I would feel a lot more comfortable about myself if that makes sense without giving too much away that's what I would say but then again that's something that's not really realistic is it because a lot of people are kind of born that way um, I guess I, I kind of just wish um, I'm not sure that's a really difficult question that, that's an actually really really good question I feel like I want to talk about that in depth one day, like maybe on my second channel. I have a second channel for those who don't know, links uh, on my channel. Um, yeah, I, I don't want to answer that question because it's kind of private and it's a really, really cool question. But I think I'll leave that one, but thanks, I appreciate it, that's a good question. But yeah, that's, that is a good question. <clears throat> uh, next question anyway uh, comes from... Uh, Oh god, I need a break and play because the one thing I don't want to do is concede because we're actually winning and I thought we were going to lose. Oh, it's a good touch. Oh, I'll get it away. We'll play Russell Martin. I, sh I don't want to make a sub either because if we do go into extra time, we'll uh, we'll need the stamina. I'm going to take off El Manda. Oh my god, this is terrible. Alright, bring on Hooper. You guys love Hooper, so here he comes. Uh, next question comes from uh, Jake White again. And he says, who do you think will be relegated from and promoted to the Prem? I'm not going to answer the latter because, again, it's too hard to predict. But relegated from, uh, I think Palace are going down. Uh, I, I got to be, I'm so shocked at how well Hull and, Hull and Cardiff have done. Major, major props to Hull and Cardiff. They've done, they've done amazingly well. I predicted uh, at the start of this season that Hull, Cardiff and Palace, all the teams that came up will go down. But they have done so well. Major props to them. Oh, yes, Butland. Great save. Um, I would say Palace, Sunderland, and Palace, Sunderland, and oh yes, Butland. Palace, Sunderland, and oh, that's a difficult question. It really is. I, I think I I uh, Palace, Sunderland. I still think Cardiff. I still think Cardiff. You know, I I, I sorry to anyone that's a Cardiff fan, but I still think Cardiff. So I go with Palace, Sunderland, and Cardiff. But um, I was so wrong about Hull and Cardiff to start the season off with anyway. Ah, oh, come on. Come on, ref, buddy, whistle. Europa League football, guarantee it, please. I'll, I'll go, yeah, I'll go with those three teams. Palace, Sunderland and Cardiff. Come on, ref, it's been 92 minutes. What? Come on, they play the advantage. You put it in the box. Oh, this is nervous now. Uh, the next question comes from Jimmy Kroger, and he says... Have you changed about? Uh, have you changed your mind about trying to make a career out of YouTube due to your channel's recent growth? Uh, all I'll say to that is you need a lot more subscribers than I've got right now to consider a career. Um, Twenty thousand is not enough to consider a career, so I haven't changed my mind at all. It's been a great growth. Uh, it's been a great uh, growth in such a short space of time. So thank you to that. Uh, thank you to everyone that's uh, subscribed. Yes, Butland, easy hands. Boot that ball up and end it. There we are. We've won it. Oh, that is... I tell you, I'm actually really relieved. Because <laughs> I honestly thought we were going to get completely bad in this game. But Butler made a couple of good saves, so uh, I was pleased with that. And uh, just before I end the uh, episode, I'll just quickly answer another couple of questions. Uh, Aaron Stewart says, thoughts on Global Scouting Network. It's horrible. It's been horribly implemented. It's so time-consuming, and I hate it. And uh, Charlie Harradine says, who do you think will qualify for the top four and in what order? I think it's going to finish Chelsea, City, United, Arsenal. I still think United will qualify for the top four. I still think Moyes will turn it around. So Chelsea, City, United, Arsenal. And uh, the last question, uh, it's good timing. Uh, last question comes from uh, Lurkio HD, And he says, what advice would you give to a smaller YouTuber making career mode vids? I would say just... Do what you enjoy most. I would say don't worry about what people are expecting of you. I would say just do what you enjoy. And if you enjoy it, then 
eventually other people will grow to enjoy it as well. I enjoy how I make my videos and therefore I have a fan base to enjoy it as well. I would say don't try and please everyone and don't try and just look for something new and unique. Just try and have fun with it and try and make sure that your your time is being well spent. That's that's all I can say really, you know. That's all I can say. It's all about you. Your channel is about you, you know. It was a, it was a quite uneventful final for an 8 minute half, I must say. 9 and 6 to 6 and 4. Possession we got 1% better. It was it was quite an evenly matched final. Um I'm I'm a little bit disappointed. Because it could have been better, but at the end of the day, we actually win the Capital One Cup. A trophy in our first season, that is unbelievable. That is a fantastic way to start this series. Um, that is fantastic. I'm really pleased with that, to be honest. And, uh, of course, that also means Europa League football next year. And that was the thing I really wanted. I really wanted to guarantee Europa League football next year, and we've done it. So that's that's awesome. That's fantastic. Um, of course, we're at the FA Cup, so it's the Champions League. Uh, what? What? Yeah, the Champions League is the only other thing we can improve on, really. If we can get to the Champions League, then that'll be incredible, but I highly doubt it. But the Capital One Cup is done. Got a trophy there in the top right. That's fantastic. And uh, the Capital One Cup has been won. Epic. That's fantastic. And uh, it does, of course, guarantee Europa League football next year, and that's fantastic. And uh, that's great. Um, that's awesome. I'm kind of waiting for the game to hurry up so I can show you the emails, but uh, that's fantastic. Um, come on, hurry up. There we go. 85 grand for winning the Capital One Cup. Fantastic. That is definitely going to buy a great new player for next year's Europa League campaign. Thank you very much. That's that's fantastic money. <laughs> um, as always, guys, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, I really appreciate it. Again, I apologise if I sound a little bit bunged up today. I'm not feeling too good. But um, thank you so much for watching today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you have, please leave a like because that is much appreciated. And it really helps my channel out. And uh, hopefully you've enjoyed uh, this Capital One Cup final. It is, of course, a live commentary. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. And, um, yeah, I'll see you for... There'll be four episodes of Career Mode over the weekend. This video should be going up on Friday afternoon. So there'll be four videos over the weekend, so long as we get enough likes on the morning videos. So make sure you tune into the morning videos. Uh, contribute to uploading the second one today by leaving a like. And uh, that's fantastic news. So uh, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. If you have, please leave a like. And I'll see you for the next episode of Career Mode uh, tomorrow morning. So yeah, see you then.